Vallis coming in hot from her trip to Minmus. It'll be great to have her back on the ground. This craft is loaded with science. I look forward to spending all these points on some new technology. Oh, uh, back to the drawing board. This is Echo 3, and let's continue our modded career mode discussion. First thing we should do is pick up some more contracts. Here in the Mission Control, we can pick up one. Here's one that looks fun to me. We're gonna take some tourists on a quick flight near the Space Center. So we can do that pretty easy. They don't generate a lot of funds, but for me, flying airplanes is just something I enjoy doing in the game. We've already made some different designs, so we're gonna just pick one of those rather than design a new one. And I really liked our VTOL design from the last video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. Do you guys have favorite things you like to do in the game? Are you more of a rocket person? Are you more of a person who likes to fly around? Let me know in the comments what your favorite things to do are in the game. The VTOL design in particular was just a lot of fun. Making VTOLs can be quite interesting. If you like that, I like making helicopters as well. Just these craft tend to be rather versatile if you need to go to different places around Kerbin. And these different airports are from the Kerbin side remastered. And I have a contract pack with giving aircraft a purpose that lets me take advantage of all these different airports. So that's been a lot of fun to me. There we go, that was a pretty easy mission to do. And I'd like to pick up another flight contract. But in this case, I'd like to try something new. So let's open up a new airfield. So we're gonna to go to Mission Control here. And we have a contract to check, to check out this new airfield. It is a little ways away. So we'll need a plane that can make that flight. But we can do that. We've got all kinds of parts available to us. So let's pick that and we'll go over to the hangar and design a new plane. So far, we've really been using jets and I'd like to make a prop airplane. And if you have the breaking ground parts, you might enjoy making these as well. And if you ever have difficulties with the props, I have several tutorials on how to make prop driven aircraft. Most of this aircraft design is going to be very similar to my other airplanes. I generally draw inspiration from what real world airplanes look like. I figure, you know, those engineers probably knew what they were doing when they designed the airplane and copying their overall designs might not be a bad idea. Anyway, that's kind of where I get my inspiration from is how do things look in the real world? Now I want to make an electric driven airplane. So we're gonna use lots of batteries just in case we don't have enough, say, solar energy at the time to keep us running. These are the small electric motors. And in hindsight, I was kind of thinking about using the medium rotors that I hadn't unlocked yet. But what I do as far as setting the power on them it was more thinking like, oh, this is what I do normally. I normally use the medium rotors. In the case of the small rotors, these are gonna be underpowered functional but underpowered. Getting the propeller blades set right is kind of a, a tricky thing so you really got to watch what you're doing. If you see what I'm doing here on the screen I'm setting one rotor or one rotor to go clockwise and the other to go counterclockwise. That'll give us a counter rotating design which will keep the craft stable and I'll have one set of propellers set to clockwise rotation and the other set to counterclockwise rotation. I will start with the propellers deployed with a deployment angle of zero. So I want those stripes to be facing me and flat on the front of the airplane. Then I'll know that they're set up correctly. Just copy and paste over to this other side and then reverse the direction of the rotors from counterclockwise to clockwise and as far as the propellers go, they'll be set as far as being placed on the aircraft. The propeller design in this case, we're going to use a constant speed variable pitch propeller. So I'm gonna turn on the rotors and they're just gonna run at full throttle the entire time. And I'll control the speed of the aircraft then by just how much I angle the blades. I'm gonna set this up with the Cal 1000. So we're gonna use uh, a pitch angle from zero to like 45 or whatever. You can use 40, 45, even 35 will work fine. It just depends there what you kind of need out of the craft. 
then as I move the throttle up and down, it will change the pitch of the blades with zero throttle, giving me no thrust. It's an electric airplane, so I'm gonna put some solar panels on here to help charge the aircraft while we're flying. And I think in full sunlight, this will be plenty of power. Now, speaking of power, I underpowered these motors. If you saw what I did earlier, I gave them like 5% size. That will not be enough. I end up coming back and I up it to 25%. I know five times bigger on the motor and it still really wasn't enough. I probably should have used a motor size closer to 50%. I just never was able to really get full revolutions per minute out of these rotors and as such the performance of the airplane suffered. It was just underpowered. An electric airplane powered with our solar panels so I waited till daylight to take off. Our batteries would have done pretty well and probably gotten us most of the way there. Anyway, we just waited till daylight and we were safe. It took a long time flying this airplane. I mean seriously long time. I was able to cook my family supper, take a shower while I just let the autopilot fly. So I end up just cutting out all the footage and give you a quick idea like, okay, we fly there, we fly back. But in reality, this was hours of time. But fortunately, with this autopilot mod, the atmospheric autopilot mod, I could just let it just fly and I didn't have to worry about anything. So that was really handy. I mean, the game could go on while I had supper and no big deal. We'll come in for a landing here. The plane itself was actually pretty easy to control. Uh, I like the design that way. I just underpowered the rotors. So if I do this again, make sure I up the motor size and we'll be all right. Now we recover that, we're good. If you remember, we set up some of these ScanSat satellites and I'm just gonna get some of the science from them, just transmit that back to Kerbin, up our amount of science that we have for our program and pick some new contracts. I think it's time we head to space again. We have not been to Minmus yet, and I would like to go there, pick up that contract. Now, we can do other things. We have these ScanSat contracts here to scan Minmus, and there's a couple ones here um, with this L uh, radar stuff. We'll get these contracts, two of them, so we'll do three contracts with just the one mission, and that should work out well for us, both with funds and with science. Now, we have an aircraft that we've made before, the spacecraft that we took to the MUN, and actually we've used this in general for our first orbital flight. So I know it's a fairly solid design. Let's just add a cargo bay, and we'll throw in our science experiments in the cargo bay. Uh, especially these ScanSat pieces, they create a lot of drag, so I'm gonna to wanna to put them in a, a fairing or a cargo bay of some kind, and I don't think they'd handle the heat of reentry overly well, so we'll just protect them that way. Other than that, that's the, the major change on this ship. I'm adding a couple more solar panels, and these are the retractable ones, because the ScanSat experiments take a lot of power while they're in use and I'm switching out the engine on the bottom there for one of these near future engines. Uh, it'll give us a little bit more efficiency, a little bit more thrust on launch. I uh, seem like a good idea. We've got a newer, better engine. We can use it. And we just added a little bit to the actual space plane itself. No, no, no major changes. Getting into orbit was, again, fairly similar. We got plenty of Delta V for this mission. Uh, Minmus actually can take less Delta V, uh, landing and return Minmus mission will take less Delta V than going to the MUN and back. So, you know, this craft can go to the MUN, it should be fine for going to Minmus and back. We'll just set up our transfer here. And I don't think I have a tutorial on specifically going to Minmus. It's probably one of the easiest places to get to is really any place in the game. Definitely the easiest place to land on if you are just starting out. I move my maneuver around and set up a good encounter. Because I'm using the ScanSat 
parts I do want to come in on a polar orbit. So we'll set up that. I need to scan like 75% of the planet to get a full, um, to complete the contract. So we'll just burn out here to the polar, we'll come over the north side, and then our retrograde burn will take place up there. I made a small mid-course correction. Uh, the ScanSat parts said they work best around 70 kilometers above the surface, so that's kind of what I was aiming for. We'll gather the other science we've got here and start running our ScanSat, which ultimately did take a while, so I just cut that out. We've now completed that, and we'll be able to send Val home. Now, coming back from Minmus, we are going to be traveling a lot faster than obviously coming back from orbit or just coming back from the month. And at the video, at the video start, I had some issues <laughs> with trying to figure out how to return. In this case, I burned the last of my Delta V and was able to slow down enough. And it looked like we were coming in just right to be able to come back to the Space Center. I thought, well, that'll work out well. Hopefully, Val is able to land this thing. Just, we're not coming in nearly as fast as last time, and I really like these vertical stabilizers that I can flare and use them as air brakes. For one, it really doubles up what you can do, get out of a part, so it means you need less parts, and you can get the same functionality. So doing more with fewer parts is, is always a good idea. And right now, this craft is laden with science, and we have a safe landing. Val did beautifully on this mission, uh, so just good to see that. We've got a decent amount of science points we can spend. If you remember also from the last video, besides the VTOL, we sent a bunch of Kerbals into space for camp. I think it's about time we bring them back. And what better way than with a contract to do an orbital rendezvous and docking? Uh, just makes sense. Now I'd like to pick up a few parts for our space planes. I need to return like 14 Kerbals from orbit, so I'm grabbing some bigger parts in order to do that. And you know, sometimes choosing, we've only got so many science points here and I really want a few more nodes than what we have. But in the end, this is kind of what I end up choosing. We're gonna use some of these, it's more like uh, conventional airplane parts. This really are not space plane parts as much, but this engine and a little bit of fuel will be plenty for the plane part as far as any orbital maneuvers and finishing getting into orbit. Throw on just a little bit of wing surface. It's only needs to have a controlled descent as we try to land it back on Kerbin you might think, wow, this design seems somewhat familiar. And, and yes, I, I do draw inspiration from sci-fi and real designs as well. It, it kind of looks like the Air Force's uh, autonomous shuttle craft as well. It, I don't know, it's a very workable design. I did some testing with this and I just, thought it did really, really well in testing. So I thought, oh, I'm just gonna replicate this for my video. Well, this does work well. I it just seemed like I had more trouble when I fly for the video than when I try flying in my testing when I'm just messing around. So we need a little bit of solar panel. We'll need a docking port, uh, throw on some little bit of RCS fuel. So we have like 15 units of RCS to and these small RCS thrusters. We don't need much in the way of monopropellant. We can use our engine for most of this. We'll get really, really close and just use RCS for the last tiny bit of maneuvering to get the docking port lined up. You can, you can dock without docking ports, or sorry, not without docking ports, you can without docking ports with uh, CLAW, but you can dock without RCS. It's just tricky. I find having a few units and a little bit of RCS thrusters can make the process a lot easier. Now we need some kind of rocket to throw this space plane up there. And I'm gonna be using some of the near future parts again. We've got, put space for seven engines, and this looks like the 
engines used on the Falcon 9. So these Merlin-esque engines are what we're going to be using to launch us up. Need plenty of control surfaces on the bottom. With the way we have all those wings on the top of this rocket, it can make the craft unstable. Now I've reduced the control authority on all those rocket plane surfaces and are really just using the control authority on those back parts. And in testing this worked beautifully. As I recorded, I really struggled with keeping this stable. Now we're getting up into orbit and at this point I'm starting to think about rendezvous. I waited till the station was kind of over the ocean there before the Kerbal Space Center continent. And when I do that, we should be able to rendezvous with the station in less than one orbit. So this is kind of like what the Soyuz does with its fast docking method. We, we don't really have to do that, but I'm watching my closest approach markers. And in this case, I'm looking at the purple ones there on the backside. So in about half an orbit is when we're going to make this approach. Now, one of my favorite techniques is I try to burn on the target side of the retrograde marker. It means that I am slowing down and getting closer to the target, slowing down relative to the target and getting closer to the target. So that's kind of my technique for rendezvous. In this case, I'm trying to dock at, I don't know, I am really, really rusty, or maybe it's just Val who's struggling. We'll blame it on Val instead of my piloting because you know, she's the one in the pilot seat. Anyway, this was for some reason a real struggle. Normally I, I dock just fine. Maybe it's where I put the, the docking port. Normally I like to have it on the front of the, of the craft and just point that way. In this case, uh, I switched that and it, I don't know, I just seemed like I struggled maybe. But it, it does end up working out well if you want to watch me struggle here and like, oh, wow, well, you know, this YouTuber struggles with docking. Well, yes, sometimes it is a pain. And we've transferred all our crew over and it's time to return them back to Kerbin. They had a wonderful, I don't know, several months up there in orbit and we'll take them back. Now this is kind of a heavy plane and we're gonna really need to take advantage of our wing surfaces to slow down. And I was getting a little concerned here because we're traveling really fast. Are we gonna end up crashing into the ocean or are we actually gonna be able to bring this back to the space center? Well, we've got Jeb and Val flying this thing. So together, I assume we're in really, really good hands flying this plane. Now the center of mass has shifted a little further forward and we're gonna really need to torque back on those control surfaces. And they do it. Wonderful landing, Jeb and Val, safely back at the Space Center. We have leveled up some of these tourists, and actually we can check the Space Center and see that these tourists, three of them, have become new Kerbal Knots for our program. Great to see what we'll do next with these guys. This is Echo 3, and thanks for joining me. I will see you next time.